I said in the first video that I would be talking about proof. This video is introduction to the proof part of the course. In this video, I want to talk in general about what a proof is and a little about what it isn't. Then I'll do one video after this on a specific proof technique that will be useful for this course. So what is a proof? Well, a proof is a mathematical argument, but what does that mean? A simple definition is hard, but my best attempt is very general. A proof is a formal, logical, mathematical argument that succeeds in convincing an informed reader. Let me talk through this definition. First, a proof is an argument. It is persuasive, it has a proposition, and it wants to convince its reader that the proposition is true. In this, it shares something with all the other persuasive writings throughout the university, including scientific studies, aesthetic critiques, and persuasive essays. Second, a proof is logical. Though mathematical discovery can happen in a very variety of ways, the presentation of mathematical ideas happens through logic. A proof will be a series of logical statements and implications. If successful, the chain of logic will lead from the assumptions of the proof to the desired conclusion. Third, a proof is formal. Mathematics has a formal notation, formal definitions, and rules for manipulating expressions. A proof follows these formalities. It can't treat mathematical ideas and definitions loosely or casually. It has to follow the rules and strict conventions of mathematics. Finally, it succeeds in convincing the reader. At the end of a proof, the question should always be, are you convinced? Proofs are accepted by the mathematical community when a sufficient number of qualified readers are convinced by the mathematical formality and logical sequence. In this course, when I present a proof, I will try to repeatedly ask if you are convinced by the proof. If you are not, then either the proof is flawed or your understanding of the argument is weak and you need to go back and study the assumptions, notations, and structures more carefully. I desperately wish there were something simple and straightforward I could say here about how to write a proof. I wish I could give you a reasonable three-step process that would always produce good proofs. Unfortunately, no such thing exists. Writing proofs is the most difficult skill in mathematics. Writing a good proof is comparable to writing a good essay. I learned how to write proofs by reading good examples, practicing my own, and being patient with the long process. In this course, I'm not going to give you any short, easy method for writing proofs, since, as I just said, no method exists. Instead, I'm going to try to start the process of exposing you to proofs. In many ways, learning to write proofs is done by example, by reading lots of proofs and seeing how they work. I'll show you a bunch of short proofs in this course and ask you to try and emulate them in the activities and the assignments. That said, I will give you some pointers and ideas on how to start. Remember that a proof is a chain of logical arguments. You should see the structure in the proofs you write. Look out for any sudden jumps or gaps in the logic. You should use your starting assumptions. If you are proving something about a prime number, but never use the fact that the number is prime, something very strange is going on. Either you are making a mistake, or the assumption that the number is prime is not necessary. Don't assume what you are trying to prove. The statement you want to prove should show up at the very end of your proof. You can't start with the statement you want to prove. Logical implications don't work that way. A proof should be a logical chain that starts with the assumptions of the proof and ends with a desired conclusion. There is a huge difference between the rough work that goes into sketching a proof and the final proof. In the rough work, I will often start with a conclusion and make various attempts to see how I might get there. I try things, play around with ideas, do test cases. But when I write up a proof, I take all this rough work and try to put it into a formal, logical chain with the desired statement coming at the end as a conclusion. A good proof includes good writing as well as good symbolic mathematics. Write clear, complete sentences. Treat proof writing with the same level of care as you would any academic writing. There are a number of special proof techniques that are worth some attention. I'll spend the next video on two of these techniques. Not all proofs need a main technique, but these two are common enough to point out at the start. To finish this video, I still f um, follow on with a couple of guidelines for writing proofs. 
Another important guideline is that I can't prove by example. Proof is not inductive reasoning, like that which is used in scientific experiments. A proof should prove all possible instances of the proposition without exception. A bunch of examples are interesting and can provide hints, but they never constitute a proof. That said, working with examples is often a great idea when working on a proof. Examples give insight and often show the way to the general argument. They just can't be used as persuasive evidence in the proof. Similarly, I can't prove by diagram, drawing, or illustration. Drawing pictures of what's going on is often a great way to build intuition to understand the situation, and it can often guide you to the right direction for constructing a proof, but a visualization itself does not constitute a mathematical lo logical argument. It doesn't meet the standards that mathematics has set for a proof. That's a lot of advice. And I suggest you use this video, or more likely the accompanying notes, as a reference. When you are working on proof questions, come back to this and ask if your attempts are following these guidelines.